Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make use of the battery status plugin for your Apache Cordova Ionic Framework uh, Android and iOS mobile application. So a little little background on the on the battery status plugin. So it allows you to check to see what percent charge your, your device or simulator has and report that back to the user. You can also check to see whether or not it is uh, in critical status or charged or or anything along those lines. So um, this this tutorial is going to make use of the actual Apache Cordova plugin as well as the NG Cordova extension set for Ionic Framework because this is going to be an Ionic Framework application. So with that all said and done let's go ahead and open up our terminal. We're going to go ahead and create a new project uh, right on our desktop. So we're going to say ionic start ionic project blank. That'll take just a second to get going. All right, almost done. All right, with the new project created on your desktop, go ahead and navigate into it. So CD if you're using a terminal on a Mac or Linux. And then we're going to go ahead and add the uh, mobile platforms to it. So we're going to say Ionic Platform Add Android. And this is going to go ahead and add our Android platform. This tutorial does work for iOS, but in order to keep things simple and more compatible with everyone viewing this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to stay strictly Android because Android can be uh, compiled on, on any operating system right now. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that. The next thing that we want to do is we want to install the Apache Cordova plugin that we're going to use. So we can do that by entering the following. All right. So that's Cordova plugin add Cordova hyphen plugin hyphen battery hyphen status. And then hit enter. And you can see that it was added into our project now. So going back uh, to our web browser, we're going to go ahead and download NG Cordova. So just go ahead and click that download link. And that should have saved it to my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and extract it. And then I'm going to take the minified file from the distribution directory and copy that into the Ionic project directory that we had just created. So we're going to go uh, our project and then www.js and we're going to paste it right next to app.js. So with that done, go into your text editor and we're going to go ahead and open up that project. Now with it opened, what we want to do is we want to add that ng Cordova file into our project. So starting with our index.html file, go ahead and find the line that says script Cordova JS and go right above it. We're going to say script source equals JS slash ng Cordova dot min dot js. We're going to close that. So now it's included into our web project. Uh, the, the next thing that we want to do is we want to include it into our angular js code. So go ahead and go to js and then app.js and we're going to go ahead and, and add it into our angular module. So we're going to do ng Cordova. Alright, so ng Cordova is now set up and the plugin is set up. So the, now the only thing left to do is really start making use of the plugin. And that could be done uh, with the following. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new controller. We're going to say dot controller. We're going to call it example controller. We're going to pass in Cordova battery status. 
We're also going to pass in Ionic Platform. And we're going to go ahead and pass in Root Scope. All right. So we added Ionic Platform because this, this plugin does make use of native code. So every, every time a plugin makes use of native code, you've got to make sure you wrap it into a Ionic Platform ready. Otherwise, it might not be ready by the time we want to use it. So Ionic Platform dot ready. Now we're going to say root scope dot on Cordova battery status and then colon status. So by using root scope on, we're actually listening for broadcasts of this um, event. Uh, so the plugin will actually broadcast uh, this string that we just typed in, Cordova battery status colon status. So every time the status of the battery changes, it will uh, send us a, it'll listen for it. So we're going to do comma function event and arcs. So this is going to be the callback that happens every time an event happens. So inside here, what we want to do is we're just going to do something really simple. We're just going to say uh, if it's charging and it changed, say that it's charging and what the percent is. Otherwise, we're going to say it's running on battery and say what the percentage. So we're going to say if args dot is plugged. I'm going to say alert charging, and we're going to say args dot level. And we're also going to add a percent to it. So that's what happens if it's charging. Otherwise, we're going to say else alert. And we're going to say battery args dot level plus percent. That's really all there is to it. So now if we go into our terminal again and we build this project, Ionic Build Android. It'll take a little while the first time. I think it has to initialize a lot of stuff. All right, so it says build was successful. So if I clear that, I, I do have a simulator already running. So if I go back into my terminal and I say ABB install R, so we can reinstall it, and we're going to say platforms Android uh, build outputs APK Android dot Android hyphen debug APK. So we're going to install it. That was quick. And we are going to find where it installed it in our simulator. There it is. I'm going to open it. All right. So nothing happened yet. But uh, so I'm on my laptop and I have 99%. So if I plug it in and then, this, and then it increases by 1%, uh, it should prompt us saying, uh, hey, the battery has changed. We just give it a minute. Shouldn't take too long to reach 100%. Ah, so I know why it's not working though. Uh, so it's not going to work because we made our controller, example controller, uh, but we never actually initialized it here. So going back into our index.html, a quick easy way we can do that is go to the ion content uh, text and we can say ng controller equals uh, example controller. Now, if we rebuild it and install it, it should work. It should, it should immediately tell us a status uh, as our first status. And then every time the status changes, it'll tell us what it is. So we're going to install it again. 
open up that simulator. And because I'm no longer plugged in, uh, it says battery is at 99%. And it'll continue to listen and it'll alert us every time it changes again. Uh, so it really isn't that difficult. Um, some, some good use cases of why you might want to do this is maybe you have uh, your code automatically download stuff. Um, see, it, it changed again. So maybe you have your code automatically download stuff when, when it's open. Um, but as you know, uh, downloading or hitting APIs kind of in the background is, is very taxing on the battery. So maybe you would want to do a check to see if first, hey, do I have, say, above 50% charge? Then, if I do, go ahead and download stuff. Otherwise, if my battery is in critical condition, uh, maybe you just want the user to do pull to refresh in order to get new data rather than having it do it for them in the background um, in order to preserve battery life. And again, uh, not so difficult.